forest not too far away. The jungle with critters work and play. There are bears and foxes, turtles and more, and all kinds of places to explore. Ah! Jungle with forest is filled with fun. Critters all cooperate to get things done. There are moms and pops, all the new pals too. They give good advice and know what to do. <laughs> We're buttons and rusty, a froggy friendly pair of cubs. We create adventure. Chucklewood is like springtime everywhere. It's a time when everything's new and full of fresh ideas for having fun. At least that's how those youngins Buttons and Rusty saw things. Yahoo! <laughs> Here it comes! Me first! Yahoo! The uh, uh. Oh, those cubs. Careful now, Buttons. Your grandma be here soon, so don't you be gone too long. I know, Mom. <gasps> oh, that was great. <gasps> hey, Buttons, what's your grandma like? Nah, all I know is she's called Graham. Last time she visited, I was only a baby. But she's my mom's mom, and Mom says when Graham gets here, we'll have a ton of fun. Great, let's go meet her. Wait up. Hey, maybe your grandma want to try rollerblading with us. We're almost there, Graham. This is very kind of you, Ranger Jones, to bring me all the way here from Sweetwater Valley. Well, well, well. There's someone you know. Hi, Jonesy! <laughs> <coughs> oh, my. We were, uh, wondering if you want to come, uh, rollerblading with us? Or something? Oh, well, thank you for the invitation, but I'm, I'm very thirsty and, and a little tired after that hot and <coughs> dusty journey. The first thing I need is a cool drink and a long nap. <laughs> we'll see you youngins back up there. She'll probably be more fun after she's rested up. Sure. Come on, let's head back. Hey! What? Oh, it's you guys. Hi, Freddy. Say, Buttons, who is that old fuddy-duddy heading for your cave? That's my grandma, and she's not an old fuddy-duddy. Is that right? <laughs> she sure looked like an old fuddy-duddy to me. No, she's a lot of fun. She can hike, she can swim, play games, she can do just about anything we can. Isn't that right, Rusty? Uh, that's what I heard. Okay, but take my word for it. You're gonna wish you lived someplace else. Some more juice, Mother? No, thank you, Bridget. Too much juice doesn't agree with me, but a little wild barley tea would be welcome. This chair's a little hard. Do you have a cushion, Abner? Um, sure, Graham. And did you have a nice nap after your journey? Oh, yes, I did. Although the bed is a little too soft. Perhaps you and I could trade, Rosie. Um, uh, of course. And some flowers would be nice. Well, we can pick some lilies when we have our picnic by the lake tomorrow. Picnic? All right! Yay! The lake? I seem to remember the lake is quite a long walk. <laughs> oh, not so fast, you young'uns. These legs aren't as young as they once were, you know. Sorry, Graham. We'll slow down. Uh, maybe we should stop here for lunch. Wait till you see our new bridge, Graham. Yeah, we built it ourselves. Hmm, it looks a little rickety. <clears throat> Actually, Graham, it's pretty solid. I checked it out myself. I think I'd better cross over there by the stepping stones. What'd I tell you? Old folks are funny duddies and scaredy cats. Graham's not a scaredy cat or an old funny duddy. She's brave. The stepping stones are harder to cross because they're slippery. Oh! Oh, 
Ouch! Oh, my ankle! I think I've twisted it. Oh, help her out, Abner. Uh, I've got you, Graham. Easy does it. Oh, oh, dear. Oh, it's starting to swell. We'll have to turn back. Someone will have to carry you. Abner? Um, we'll need some kind of stretcher for that. Maybe we could make one. I have an idea. And there goes your bridge. I knew I shouldn't have come along. I just didn't want to spoil your fun. We shouldn't have let you. <sighs> That's for sure. That's a bad sprain you've got there, Grams. And it looks like it'll be a little while before you can walk on it. Here's some more ice, Mother. Good. And you'll be more comfortable if you keep it raised up. Well, thank you. You're very, very kind, dear. You'll have to stay with us until you're all better. And we'll all make sure you have anything you want. Well, I would like a nice soft feather pillow. And uh, some chamomile tea. And a little honey. Cubs, if this poultice is going to help the swelling in Graham's ankle go down, I'm going to need some more herbs. But, Mom, we spent the whole morning doing stuff for Graham. Oh, shh, shh, shh. Graham's taking a nap, and she needs those herbs. Gee, Mom, we care about Graham, but when do we get to do what we want? <coughs> what is that? <coughs> I can't see. Maybe it's not your gram who needs changing. Given her condition, maybe what needs changing is the way you see her. Huh? Well, as folks get older, they may not be able to do some of the things they used to. Like skateboarding and running? Precisely. But that doesn't mean they can't do many other things. But the point is, you can only see what your gram can do, not what she can. She may be much more than what you see on the outside. Your gram may be full of surprises, too, but you may have to work a little harder to see what they are. But how do we do that, Franklin? It's extraordinary what patience and a little TLC can do to bring out the best in critters. TLC? Tender, loving care. It brings out the best in all of us. Really, Franklin? There's only one way to find out. And remember, if at first you don't succeed... Keep on trying! Thanks, Franklin. We got some herbs to get. Skinned your knees and stubbed your toes. Slipped and bone smack on your nose. Stuck in the... You can't move in any way. A little TLC will get you through the day. A little TLC will get you through the day. Body hurts, it feels a achy, legs are wobbly and shaky. Under covers is the place you want to stay. A little TLC will get you through the day. A little TLC will get you through the day. Herb tea and honey, sleep you need your rest. A healing touch helps so much, soon you're feeling your best. Yes, your head pounds, your heart and tired. The gross, y'all, uninspired, feel so bad, you don't even want to play. A little TLC will get you through the day. A little TLC will get you through the day. Yeah! We brought Graham some flowers to cheer her up. <laughs> I'm allergic to their pollen. Oh, sorry. We didn't know. Just put them by the cave entrance. <laughs> that puts me in mind of a story my grandma used to tell. Oh, that was a long time ago. Tell us 
a story. Oh, I'm sure you have more interesting things to do than to listen to an old yarn. Tell us a story. Yeah, we want to hear it. Tell us. Oh, please tell us. <laughs> Very well. Now, this isn't a true story, you understand. It's what you might call a fairy tale. That's the kind of story that teaches us a thing or two. There once was a little girl bear, a lot like Bear Bet here. She had a loyal companion. Like me? Yes. We can even call her Frisky. And they had two other friends, two boy cubs, who fancied themselves heroes. Buttons and Rusty! Now, it was about that time a tricky traveling magician, who always had his eye on Bear Bet's locket, believing it to have great and possibly magical value, he decided to try to trick her into giving it up. He sounds like Claude the Coyote Trader. Greetings, my charming young princesses. I couldn't help but admiring your lovely locket, and I wondered whether you might consider trading it for a special clock that has just come into my possession. And what, pray tell us so special about this here clock? Why, nothing, except that it makes time stand still. But Bear Bet was so intrigued that despite Frisky's warning her against it, she agreed to trade her locket. Of course, no princess would follow such a character if this were real life. But as I said, this is a fairy tale. And people often do unwise things in fairy tales. That's how we can learn from them. Finally, they arrived. There it is, just as I promised. But how does it stop time? Oh, I've been tricked! But at that moment, something else happened to make the loss of her pendant seem unimportant. She fell into a deep, deep sleep. Her friend <laughs> ran blindly through the forest as fast as she could, looking for help. Now the princess's young friends liked nothing more than an adventure. So when Babette's trusted companion told them what had happened, they immediately vowed to rescue her. They retraced her steps through the forest, through the cave, over the bridge, and returned to find Birbet. Our two young heroes were not afraid of the magical flowers. But when it came to waking the sleeping cub, that was a different matter. Did they try kissing her? Yuck, no way! They tried everything, but nothing would wake her up. I told her the clock would make time stand still, and for her, it has. So what did they do? Well, what would you have done? You know, Bridget, when my grandma used to tell us her stories, she would work on a quilt and eat gingerbread. <laughs> That's a nice idea. We could start one. <laughs> we'll need some scissors and needles and thread. Looks like fun. Can I try? Me too? No, uh, we're still thinking. Well, have you decided what you would do? I guess we would try to get some help. And whom would you go to? Someone just like yourselves? Uh, no. Someone older than us who knew about magic and stuff. Well, it just so happened there was someone older than the cubs. A wise old bird, though a bit absent-minded. He was a wizard of sorts who went by the name of... Franklin! Indeed! He looked in his book of spells and gazed into his crystal ball. And what did he see in the crystal ball? The cure, right? I'm afraid the princess is doomed to sleep on and on and on until time starts again. Franklin would know what to do. Yeah, what kind of wizard is he if he can't break a spell? Ah, but part of the adventure is solving the problem together. Think how good it'll make them feel. Of course, they'll have to have some patience. Hmm, we didn't think of that. So, what did they do? I'll get to that. But first, I have to check on the gingerbread. <laughs> Oh, can I lick the spoon? The 
patience, Freddy. Not until I'm done with it. Now, where was I? We have to think of a way to make time start again, Franklin. Hmm. An interesting concept. Let's consult my ancient tome. Let's see. Terror, terror, time. Ah, here it is. Ah, the recipe to break the spell. Four things let time resume its pace. A spring, a key, a ring, a face. I don't get it. What does it mean? I'm not sure. Where the caster of the spell has been, they are not lost but just unseen. Hmm. Maybe what you're looking for isn't exactly what you think. A spring? A key? And a face? A ring? Let's go. So the three friends scoured the forest for a spring. Well, it's kind of a spring. I don't see anything except water. How are we supposed to take the spring with us? Rusty wondered. But just then, an old lady bear appeared, carrying a bucket. Hello there, ma'am. Do you know what we're supposed to do with the spring? The spring? Why, enjoy it. Same as the summer, fall and winter. Uh, not that kind of spring. This kind of spring. Ah, I see. Only it's not really a spring. It's a whale. And a sour-tasting whale at that. Hmm. We're back where we started. A magician once promised me a spring of my very own in return for my locket. But it was just a trick. Who? Here, ma'am, uh, let us give you a hand with that bucket. And so they helped her, even though they were in a big hurry with their own quest. Why, thank you. You are so kind. They carried the water to her little hut in the woods. Just put her there. Thank you. I would like to reward you some way for your kindness, but I have nothing. That's it. A spring. Just like the wizard said, it isn't the spring we thought it would be. May we have this? Well, yeah, sure. It's nothing but a sore reminder of how I was tricked. So, take it. It's uh, yours. Oh, thank you. Come on, let's go. I don't guess you have any idea where we can find a key or a face or a ring. Uh-uh. Sorry. Well done. What are you going to do with it? That is something I will try to figure out while you're finding the rest of the spell-breaking ingredients. Meanwhile, not far away, the wily old magician was still trying to open the locket when he happened to overhear three young friends. We have the spring. Now all we need is the key. And a face. And a ring. But whose face? There are faces everywhere. Now just then, a little old pack rat happened by. Pack rat? You mean pack mouse? Pack mouse, of course. But this pack mouse had a limp that was very old. What are you staring at? Oh, sorry. We didn't mean to stare. We were looking for a face. Well, you can't have mine. But the three friends had learned the rewards of showing consideration. Did you hurt your foot? No, I'm practicing a new dance. What does it look like? We didn't mean to offend you. Would you like some help with that sack? How do I know I can trust you with it? After that magician character tricked me out of my silver walking stick, I don't trust anyone. But the little pack rat, I mean pack mouse, eventually allowed them to carry his sack all the way back to his little cabin. Well, that'll be fine there, okay? I appreciate it. Anything I can do for you? Just ask. You don't have any rings, do you? Rings is about the one thing I don't have. Oh, look, a nice music box. Please, not that. That was supposed to be the key to priceless treasure. That's what he called it. Take it away, please. That's what who called it? The crooked magician. Some treasure. I've got it! The key! And you're welcome to it. That tune drives me crazy. A key. The key that winds up the music box. But how does that go with a spring and a ring? And a face. Right. I've been asking myself that. Who or what has a face? And a spring. And a key. A clock! We have to make the clock work again. So the three friends' patience with the wizard was also rewarded. 
Now all they had to do was to get back to Bear Bit. <laughs> when it come this way, they're in for quite a ride. But that wasn't going to be easy. <laughs> I can't look. Fortunately, since it was magical, they didn't have to know how clocks really work. Although it might have speeded things up if they had. It works! But why doesn't Bear Bed wake up? It's, it's not, not working. working! But then they remembered the lesson they learned that day. Patience! The ring! Ah, lock it! Where's that cheating rogue? Uh-oh. Time to go. Bear Bet, wait! <laughs> oh, he got away. But at least you're all right again, Bear Bet, and... Help! Help me! And did they let him out? Did you get back the pendant? Yes. What happened? Well, you see, that's actually another story. And besides, I think the gingerbread is ready. What a great story! Mm, and this is turning out to be a very fine quilt. Oh! Hi, everyone. I just came by to see how the patient's doing. No, oh, you can't fool me, Ranger Jones. You're here for the gingerbread. Why, don't mind if I do. Mm, delicious. Why, thank you. My ankle feels so much better, I may just go home tomorrow. No, stay. You have to tell us more stories. Please stay. Well, I appreciate the sentiment. But I have to say, Chuckerwood's just a little too crowded for me. Treating our elders considerately means using please and thank you and excuse me. Older folks like some peace and quiet. What sounds like fun to you may make them think there's a riot. Our elders move more slowly and aren't as steady. But patience and a helping hand will get them ready. Sometimes grabs and grabs feel the cold more. So lower the window and close the door. Keeping toys clear of steps and out of the hall will prevent anyone from a slip or a fall. When we treat our elders with thought and care, we discover they have a lot to share. They have years of experience and stories that give pleasure. They are indeed a most precious treasure. 